Hey, Cameron, welcome to the show. I'm so happy you're here. Hey, Rachel, super excited to chat with you today. Why don't we start off? Just tell us a little bit about you, your story, how you got into doing what you're doing. I would love to. So I was born and raised in the great city of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, it's also where I've most recently planted my roots. Um, I've been here for about the past four years, but spent roughly a decade away from the city. I attended the University of South Carolina in Columbia and studied international business, Mark and Spanish. I interned with Procter & Gamble while I was in school there and shortly right excuse me, right out of school, I went to work with them full-time in Boston, um, worked with P&G for six and a half years in Boston, New York, and then finally in Atlanta. When I moved back to Atlanta in 2015, I shortly thereafter left P&G and went to work for two smaller CPG companies, one of which I managed a global private label business for an air care company, and then later on I managed a large client services team for a fast fashion company. Um, but roughly, gosh, two years ago almost, which is crazy time flies, I left the corporate world and took somewhat of a sabbatical for about six months and then was given this great opp opportunity to come work for AdCaddy, and that's where I am today. What made you want to leave corporate? Great question. So full transparency, I actually lost my job. Um, from one day to the next. I never thought it was going to happen to me, but it did. And I learned that what I felt like was total job security in the corporate world was in fact not the case. Yep. Um, so I was somewhat forced to leave, but honestly, in hindsight, it was such a blessing because at the time I was traveling extensively to say the least and gave me a, it gave me a chance to really step back and think about what it was that I really wanted for my life and mm -hmm. what was a priority to me. And so I did that, like I said, for about six months, I was um, given a nice severance package, so I was able to do that, and then was approached about this opportunity with AdCaddy, and never looked back, and it's been the greatest decision I've ever made. I never thought I would leave corporate, but I did, and it was phenomenal, and I will will never go back. Can you tell us about what you're doing with AdCaddy? I can. So I am co-founder and COO of AdCaddy, which really means I do a little bit of everything at the moment. We started about 18 months ago, and so there were four of us who started it originally. Our team has grown a little bit since then, but I primarily work with all of our contractors, so whether it be developers or um, you know graphics and PR, et cetera, to really get the app to where it is today. So I believe you're familiar, but it's a consumer email platform. So what we do is we provide you with a consumer email address in order to be able to really differentiate your personal inbox, which is currently and most likely very cluttered with brand content and your consumer life. So you can use that address to go out and subscribe to newsletters or check out online or in store, um, you know, Amazon, Delta, whatever it is that you're using your personal email address for currently change that to your ad caddy and we have a platform that's hyper organized and specifically created for brand content. Cool. So what made you kind of come up with this idea and run with it? Great question. My co-founder and I both come from consumer product backgrounds and both worked with brands quite extensively and both felt this tension of brands trying to be able to communicate with consumers and consumers trying to be able to receive brand content, but just having this complete overwhelm in the inbox being that email is really king for marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and brands honestly are using this like spray and pray method with email marketing because there's no other choice. They don't have a lot of good data around what emails are working and what content people want to receive. So we really believe that people want to keep up with brands that they love, that we might be annoyed by the marketing, but it's not a matter of not wanting it. It's just a matter of wanting it on our own terms because we ask people all the time, like, why don't you unsubscribe from brands in your inbox? And people always say they fear missing out on something, you know, yeah. missing out on a promotion or, you know, that new product at Apple or whatever it might be that really excites you. People don't want to miss out on that, but there's so much content and so much clutter and disorganization that it's very difficult to sift through those things. 
And we just felt like there has to be a better way. And we decided to create that way. Okay. So it's an app that's in, currently in the app store. Correct. You can go into the app store or Google play and download it today. We've been out of beta since the spring. So we're kind of in the process now of getting more seed series a investment. So there will definitely be a lot of, um, development and feature ads and whatnot in the future. But right now you can use, you can create your consumer email address on Cameron at agcaddy.com. Yes. Um, I believe Rachel at agcaddy.com is available still. Ooh. So you can create your email and go out and start using it and receiving all those emails to the app, hyper-organized instead of to your con um, personal inbox. Cool. So were there any challenges in developing an app? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> lots of challenges. So, you know, first and foremost, I would say it's, it might be kind of obvious, but there's always this tension when you're new between fin financial, you know, what you have in the bank and what you really need to do. Mm -hmm. And you have to be really creative about how you spend money when you're pre-revenue. And so I would say that's number one, you know, of course we need to developers because you can't stop developing it and coding it. So that was most likely where we spent the majority of our money. But when it came to graphic design and PR and those sorts of things, we had to get creative about how we connected with people who were really experts in that field without having to spend a lot of money. So we really believe in networking. So using our friends and family and colleagues and previous clients, people who really believe in what we're doing in the mission yeah. to either honestly work for free out of passion or even work for a small piece of equity in the company. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's a big struggle that a lot of entrepreneurs have in the beginning is mm -hmm. they don't have the money coming in, but they know they need to invest. And so for you, it was like reaching out to close friends and family and asking if they would help for free. Of course. And we were self-funded and we, we have been in some ways from the beginning self-funded. We have gone through friends and family since, since it's been 18 months. But, you know, I think you can always find people who are either a passionate about you and your ideas and your success or passionate about what you are doing and really believe in it. And so I don't think you always have to compensate people with money in the beginning. You know, there's always other opportunities, other ways to, to compensate people. Totally, totally, totally. What's been your biggest struggle that you've had as you're launching this and how did you get past that? Hmm. The biggest struggle for us currently is the transition of, of consumer or user behavior. So we're so used to Gmail or Yahoo, whatever you use. Most people these days are using Gmail. Um, we're so used to the way that works and the idea of starting fresh, I think oftentimes worries people on a lot of different levels, but mostly because of time, they think, oh, wow, well, I already have this email address. Now I have to create a new one. I have to go out and resubscribe to brands or change my account settings, change my autofills and these things. But what I always tell people is like, similarly, when you make a physical move, which I'm in the middle of right now, yeah. so I can relate to this, you know, the great thing about making a change or a move is that you are able to take that time to really organize and purge the things that you don't need. And I think that the little bit of time investment you take ends up having such great gains in the end. And so, you know, we try to do things to help people be able to do it easier. So one of the things we offer to people is different ways to change your autofill settings, depending on what kind of computer or browser you use, which oftentimes helps remember, it helps you remember when you're checking out to use your ad caddy instead of your personal. But um, yeah, I would say user behavior is probably the most difficult. How have you gotten visibility? So how have you done like advertising, marketing, and all of that? Mm -hmm. We have done a little bit of everything. We've been super grassroots. So we do a lot of local events here in Atlanta. So whether it's going and pitching, we actually did a pitch yesterday at a small incubator here, but going to the different incubators or co-working spaces and talking to people. But the primary thing we do is actually partnering with brands. So doing some kind of sweepstakes or giveaway, whatever it might be in order to get our name out there, get some exposure, but also help grow the email list and um, email analytics for the brand that we're working with. 
Can you share how you would go about reaching out to a brand to partner with them and what kind of that relationship looks like? Yeah. I mean, it's super simple. We try to use all the connections that we have. So whether it's, you know, going on LinkedIn and seeing who you're connected with or who your second or third connections with, um, but really networking. And we never say no to a conversation. And that is a big thing for me. Like if, despite the fact that I'm really busy and have a lot going on, if someone wants to meet with me and to hear about what we're doing or wants to offer some kind of um, feedback or advice, I never say no to a conversation because I think it's so important to continue to connect with people, build networks, and really just gain knowledge from people who have different expertise. Totally. Have you made any mistakes as you, you've been <laughs> growing? Yeah, of course. I mean, I would say, as cliche as it sounds, you know, nothing's really a mistake in the sense that like, oh gosh, I wish we could go back and not do that because we've right. learned so much and the nature of a startup and especially with like an app is you're going to pivot and adjust pretty frequently because you have to test things in order to know which way to go. You know, there's so many forks in the road and you have to just kind of take those as they come. Um, but certainly, you know, the original idea we had for the app is not super far off from what we have today, but the maybe the interface and the way it was presented was quite different. And we realized pretty quickly that it was too much of a hurdle for people to overcome going from traditional email to what our idea was that we really needed to introduce something slower to people. And so that was, I mean, probably the most obvious example of like, okay, we went down this path. We invested a lot of time and effort into this, but the reality is people just can't jump from A to Z. We've got to take them through the whole alphabet, you know? Totally. And I mean, as you're in business, you just learn and you grow and you change. And I think so many people are afraid to make a mistake or put themselves out there, but then you yes. end up never launching. 100%. I, my CEO and co-founder has been such an encouragement in that way. He's like, just do it. Just get out there. Just, you know, make the decision because if we don't make it, we'll sit here and just analyze and analyze and think about it for so long until we've never actually launched the product. Totally. Totally. I think that's where a lot of people get stuck. It's literally like they're just over analyzing and they wait and they mm -hmm. wait and they wait and they sit on an idea yeah. and you just got to move. Like one of the things that I always say is take messy action and move quickly. I love that. And that's how you're going to see massive success so much more quickly than if you just sit there. <laughs> I love that messy. Yeah, that's great. Messy action. Yes. Yeah, messy action. <laughs> What's one of the best books you've read? Oh, this is always such a tough question to me. There's so many amazing books out there. And um, from a professional sense, one of the books that I really love, it's called Quitter. And it talks about really um, bridging the gap between your day job and your dream job. So I really love that. But to be honest with you, there are a lot of even children's books there. You know, I am such a fan of that book because I think that they're so simple, but they have such bold ideas in them. Yeah. And so there's, of course, so many incredible authors out there in the you know business world and whatnot. But I always encourage people like, you know, as you're reading, I know you have a child. So like as you're reading to your child or you're, you know, reading something that is more for personal novel, whatever it is, there's always these like bold ideas. Um, you know, my example of where the wild things are, I really believe there's a wild thing in all of us, you know, I mean, I definitely can relate to it. And so I just kind of try to find little, you know, chunks out of anything I'm reading, regardless of if it's directly business related or not. I love that. I, it, I, there's definitely always lessons in kids' books where I'm yes. like, oh, that was really good. <laughs> I know. Simple but bold. It's great. Yeah. Totally. What does it mean to you to make an impact? For me, making an impact is about improving people's lives. So in the case of Ad Caddy, I believe that that is primarily in the sense of time, um, giving people back time. And I think that in the world we live in, you know, traditionally people were so focused on giving people back money, mm -hmm. but I really believe that we're making this shift towards time. So whether it be Amazon, obviously with, you know, prime shipping or Uber or all of the grocery stores and delivery services out there now, I feel like people are really shifting their focus towards wanting to save time over saving money. And I think it's such a beautiful thing because it's what I highly value in my life. For sure. 
Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. What do you see as being like the next step for AdCaddy? Where do you see the company going? What's next for you guys? We ultimately want to be the rails between consumers and brands, 100%. So imagine a platform where you don't only receive consumer emails from it. So when I say consumer emails, I mean, you know, when you're subscribing to a coupon or a newsletter or checking out online, getting your flight confirmations, all of that. But in addition to that, having a platform where you can have a feedback loop with brands. So you can be giving, um, getting customer service or giving feedback. You can be liking emails, interacting with other people. Brands can be feeding you specific content that makes sense for you. So coupons as you're walking into stores. Um, we really want to be that like full service platform for people. And that's really our ultimate goal. Right now we are in our series A seed funding round. In fact, we have a really big meeting today, which is super exciting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we, we really have lots of big plans in store and have a ton of faith in where this app is going to go for sure. Well, that's exciting. And mm -hmm. good luck with your meeting. Thank you. <laughs> well, where can we connect with you? You can get more information about AdCaddy at adcaddy.com. We're also available um, in the App Store and Google Play. Currently, you can download us and really any social media platform at AdCaddy, and it's A-D-K-A-D-D-Y. Awesome. Well, it was so good chatting with you and learning more about the app and development and all that good stuff. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks, Rachel. Great chatting with you. You too.